Hello, welcome back to my channel, Antoinette here. I'm just going to do a side by side of these two primordial tarot decks that I have in my collection. They are fairly new um, in a recent kind of outrageous deck haul purchase and um, completely different, although they have very similar names. And I haven't got round to working with them yet because actually I found they are so different to what I'm used to working with that um, these ones might just take a little back seat for a while. I thought I was going to use them or be able to jump straight into them. I mean, I probably could, but there's a difference to their suits. And that's where I then get myself in a little bit of a pickle. So I haven't decided yet whether I will use these colour corresponding as I recognise and know and understand the cards myself, my associations, or if I will get round to understanding the orientation of the suits in both decks as they are slightly different to the colour coding that we are, or most of us would be um, accustomed to. This one is slightly more so than this one to get your head around, I think. So it's probably a bit of an unpair comparison as well. They are very different and yet very similar. Um, so the first one on this side is by Sergio Topi. It is a low Scarabeo deck, so it comes in a kit box, two-part box, lid comes off. And the backs look like this. It is a um, slightly thicker cardstock to a normal low Scarabeo. So if you're familiar with the cards that come in these two-part boxes, then it's that cardstock. So you'll know that's slightly different to the tuck box cardstock. Um, of course, this is a book that comes with multiple languages, so it's only a few pages to what we're looking at. So I just thought we would start with this one. Um, so you've got English, Italian, Spanish, French, Portuguese, and is that Russian or Polish? I'm sure. Okay. So starts here where it talks a bit about the deck. Um, exploring instinctual drives for emotions and physical reactions, getting underneath the veneer of civilization and psychology and revealing the roots of our behavior. It views humans as part of nature and all that that means. So it tells us a bit more about exploring the deck. Um, focus on symbols in tarot. Many of us focus on symbols in tarot. Try to release the need for system and symbol. This deck wants to explore integrated connection on several levels. The mind, the body, spirit are not separate entities, but are all part of the whole. Humans and nature are all part of the same world and are connected much more closely than we sometimes think. When you approach these cards, focus on feeling first. So information there. And then here's where I'm talking about for the differences. So colour coordination, blue. Okay, yeah, water, cups. So perfect, we've got blue cups, but blue is the suit of the soul, loosely relating to the cups. So it's not quite following the understanding of those cards for us. Yellow cards are the suit of jewels and following pentacles. So yellow, most of us might be thinking air, swords, so yellow is earth in this case. Green cards are the suit of nature. So nature, I'm thinking pentacles, but I've already got pentacles. Nope, we're referring to wands. I suppose if you think logically, wands as in trees growing out of the ground. Green leaves. Um, and then red is a suit of blood um, and relates to swords. So... Red, normally you might be thinking wands. Green, you'd be thinking um, pentacles. And yellow, you'd be thinking swords. So that's different here. And then the um, court cards are the child, the animal, the woman and the man. Now, I'm going to forget these as we go through the deck. So I'm probably not going to comment on what they are. But that's your page, knight, queen, king. In this book, it tells you, so you've got your major arcana. So if I maybe read out the full for this one. The journey of human experience begins with human consciousness and the realisation that we are all unique beings. We sense that we are somehow separate from everything and each other, and yet we remember also that we are also connected to everything. The egg represents the fool's birth and recognition of self. 
His smile shows that he is just so happy to be here, to be himself and to be in this amazing world that is full of all manner of adventures, filled with excitement and wonder. He begins his time on this planet. The divinatory meaning um, is beginning, innocence, excitement, starting a new journey and a new phase of life. So that's semi-similar to things that we might know. We have um, renamed, so we have the High Priestess is the Great Mother, the Empress is the Mother, which is okay. We have the Father for um, the Emperor, the Shaman for the um, Hierophant, we have Union for Lovers, Chariot, Abundance for, is that Strength, that one? Balance, Fairness, Prosperity. That might be Justice then. Abundance. What's number 11? Creative Power. Creativity, Alchemy, Preservation, Gentle Touch. Okay, yep, so Justice is 8 and um, Strength is 11, Hermit, Time for the Wheel, Creative Power for um, Strength, Sacrifice for Death, no, for Hanged One, sorry, we have Death, we have the Source for Temperance, the Daemon for the Devil, or Demon, and then we have the Standing Stone for the Tower, the Star, the Moon, the sun, the prey for judgment. That's an interesting one. And then we have the world. Then moving into the suit of soul, which is blue, so cups, uh, water. This is the moment before daybreak, representing dreams and meditation. The suit of the soul explores our experiences of spirituality and magic. So for the ace, um, it's called etching of the soul, or we'd call it ace of cups. And the divinatory meaning is new spiritual experience, practicing personal magic, connection with the spiritual world. So some of you might be thinking wands there. So, yeah, that's why I haven't been able to jump straight into using this deck um, as I thought I would. So that's that one. And then we have this. So this one is um, available from Los Garabeo and across you know, the internet, Abe Books, World Books, I think WH Smith had it, obviously Amazon sometimes stocks it. Um, so it is uh, mass market available fairly easily. This one, the Primordial Dreams Tarot, is an um, AI produced deck based on cave drawings. Now I'm not going to labour too much about this deck because Robin at Toastal Tarot beat me to getting this video out because this one I've been planning for a little while. It's just that um, I couldn't do it the weekend because we had other priorities that took over. And uh, I'm just going to link his video in the description box so you can go and see his talk through of this deck. And he does he's done a lovely job of it, so there's nothing more that I can say about the deck that he hasn't already said. But this one um, I got from, I think I got it direct from their website, which I've linked below, but they also have an Etsy shop, which I didn't realise. So I definitely don't recall buying it through Etsy. I'm sure I had to like search for this on the interwebs to get it. So it tells you about the cards. The cards are slightly different to what you're used to getting. You've got some good spreads in here to play with. And it has some extra cards. So in the Major Arcana, we have a double zero to start off with, which is the self-ego identity position. Um, and then we go to the cards themselves. So this is all the way through the book for the cards. Um, and you can see again from the way that you look at the cards, there's not really much that you're probably recognising from a symbol aspect. And also these cards don't have any markings on them. So I have marked my cards um, so I know what I'm looking at. And then uh, suspension. So this one, if you can tell, the background of the card is correct. So this is how the card sits because you can see from the rock formation. However, in the book, the person standing upright suspended on twigs on the card the person's suspended in a hanged position or you know in a suspend a diff, the upside down suspension position making it easier to tell that that's the hanged one um so that is something i have noticed going through all of these it doesn't really tell us much about the imaging in the book but it gives us fairly standard meanings for each card and then when we get to the back of the, the um, major arcana 
We have creation for 20, the world, and then we have the dreamer is card 22. And I've given it um, some like Zs as my symbol. So I've written that symbol into this book because it's different because it's a symbol I've not used before. And that's just in the bottom of my card. So I know it's the dreamer. I think I've actually written the dreamer on the card as well. And then we come to the suits. So with this one, yellow, how bizarre. So yellow says one of air, but excuse me, don't want to spoil the surprise. So yellow says air, here it says wands. Oh yes, air, yes, right, okay. So yellow says air and it represents wands. So again, color switch. Earth is brownie color coins, perfect. Fire is red and equals swords. And water is cups. So I don't know, let's have a quick peeky. One of air, invention of projects and ideas. And let's have a quick look at one of swords. So one of fire, honesty, determination, conquest. One of fire may indicate a moment of perfect clarity about decisions and situations the current has been putting off dealing with. An opportunity for victory over stagnation. It may also suggest that a person may display deep discernment of the inner workings of a sensitive situation with all the intense feelings that may come from knowing the whole picture. And this one, air suggests inspiration, intellect, pursuits, breaking through, creative block, or otherwise getting unstuck, new endeavours and enterprises and excitedly planning for the future. Two of their plans, courage and paths. Person facing a major decision, trying to figure out the best course of action to get to this point. One likely has already overcome challenges and there are still elements of risk. It suggests that the right decision is one that is backed by prior life experience and all the intuition that comes along with it. So intuition is kind of correct, isn't it? Number two, blockage, impasse, stalemate. Yeah, I can see that matching the normal um, blindfolded figure. Suggests two opposing forces who have reached a stalemate, perhaps due to neither wanting to face what might come afterwards. One may feel that there is no path forward in their life goals. OK, so that does much more an air element in the fire. <coughs> so, again, I'm going to have to see with this one because I didn't expect that. Um, I didn't research the deck, basically. I saw the names. One is something that touches deeper than your standard tarot. Um, uh, and yeah, I wanted to push myself a bit, but I think these might be pushing me a bit too much right now. But we'll see where we go. So that's the book. And the book is bigger than the deck that it came with. And I think the deck came in two sizes because, why do I say that? Because when I ordered it, I got um, two cards in the deck that aren't in this deck. So they're from a deck. I don't know what deck they're actually from. So I'm assuming these might have come from another printing of this, perhaps. And those are the backs of the cards. Um, they do look reversible, but actually they're not. If you're keen-eyed, you'll see that there's a dip to this one. And when you turn it upside down, it's completely different. So, I mean, it's a, it's a minor detail, but it's one that stuck out to me like a sore thumb when I was trying to work out the orientation of my hanged one. So that's how I discovered that. And... Um, Oh, no, sorry. So I got this from eBay. <laughs> I got it from that website. I knew I'd have to go on a big search to get this one. And it's obviously trying to get the taxes and the shipping down in costs for me. OK, so enough of that. Let's get into it. So you get this little reminder card with this one. So to just remind you prompt wise and then um, the court cards, of course, are going to be different. So we have the initiate, the hero, the mother, the father. So page, knight, queen, king. So you've got that as a quick reference guide, um, which I do think I'll probably be needing unless I then choose to put my symbols onto those cards as well. And there's a high chance I will. So I don't have to keep this around. Um, but we'll see how I go with these back to front colour co combinations. 
So this one came with this bag. It's an um, indie deck. It was, I think, a Kickstarter. Um, yeah, so it's on linen cardstock. Come, gorgeous bag. Comes in. This one comes in a two-part box. So I've just um, sat the bottom into the top there for the moment. Um, 80 card intuitive deck by Leanne Ariadne Zubest. I don't think I've mentioned who created it yet after all that chatting. Um, so that's the base of the box. And then this one is Sergio Toppi, if I didn't mention his name, and that is the standard Los Scarabeo two-part box. Okay, let's bring you down and get into the decks. I have got some, some <laughs> limited array of, um, I should mention actually, Robin described this beautifully, touching base with it. So it's got this kind of black shimmer. Um, he referred to it almost like a rainbow obsidian shimmer to it, um, which I thought was actually quite poetic. I liked his description. Of course, Los Garabeo is not edged. It hasn't been edged yet. I don't know what to edge it in either. Or well, I might not. I don't edge all of my decks. Um, actually, probably only edge maybe 10% of my decks. So we're starting with the ego on this one. So this has its extra zero zero and I've put that onto the card to remind me exactly what that is because I took it out originally I wasn't going to keep it in the deck so that's the first one and then here we go so straight into the full you can see there is already a very big difference a departure from standard tarot whichever system you're using I think um, but let's go so and this one has numbers so again this one doesn't tell you what they are this is just numbered 1 to 22 this one has nothing for the Major Arcana, other than my symbols at the bottom. So you need to know what numbers represent on this one, unless you again, like me, want to put symbols on them, but I do know. And I kind of wish now that I'd put the numbers on these instead of symbols, but hey-ho. So here's our Magicians. Our High Priestesses. Empresses, emperors. I felt they had a very similar feel to them. The hierophants, again, they sort of felt similar to me because I've got like one eye showing from him, one eye here. He's got his kind of bones and necklaces. He's clearly wearing his and lovers. The chariot, so you can probably spot what this one is with the wheels, and it has a sort of chariot appearance to it. This one, of course, doesn't, but you can see here you have your wheels. Um, maybe this is the item that's being carried by the wheels. Um, our strength cards. Let me just check that one a second. Oh no, it wasn't, was it? This one was correct. So this one's in, so this would be justice because in the decks, this is the way around that they came. So here we have strength, here we have justice. And hermits. And our wheel of fortunes. Strength. Justice, very different feeling to strength. This is the suspended one or the hanged one, as I said. So there's the rock formation, but the person is now the other way around to the image in the book. So I don't know which one is actually correct. We have our rebirth or death. That's quite uh, ouch, isn't it? Temperance. This one, and I think Robin said the same, is actually quite hard to see the temperance image within it. So I, I struggled with this one the first time I saw it. Um, I can see the water flowing here. But again, I suppose she's above, we've got below. There's a sort of above-below balance going on. But um, 
Yeah. These ones are quite similar. So the devils. And then we have the towers. Stars. I love the fact that it's like sparking, so um, flint to give illumination in the dark. Our moons. Suns. Judgments. So two different judgments. Um, this one's almost like looking up, aren't they? At a different skyline. Preying on the animal there. Whereas this one feels like there's an eye watching you or two eyes up here above well, three eyes maybe in the horns so that's quite interesting although there might be a head there but then is this part of this person it's got a very interesting feel to it this one and then we have our wild cards i love the fact that it's um kind of stonehenge-esque for me and again this one we have lots of stone formation leave that on there a second and then we have our there we go so the dreamer card 22 um as you can see i've written on that one and then we're on to the air suits, am I right? What did I say about that one? I forgot already. Green. Green is wands. Yellow is wands. So we're on to the air but wands. Okay, so I have put wands and wands. I think that's, I couldn't think of how to do it. So that's how I've done this. Um, if at the end I decide it works a bit differently, then I'll come back and redo the other way. So I think I've lined them up with how we would do them as, rather than the elements, the suits. Yeah, that's what I've done. So, uh, that wands. Oh my gosh. just separate these out in case I need to come back okay so these ones are depicted by dots these ones again have numbers and it's at 1 to 13 I do believe 14 so this is depicted by color these have color for the suit but this is definitely very nature based isn't it so so card eleven, aka page. Queens and our kings or fathers. And then we have the earth suits. They both have a very interesting um, feel to them. Of course, there's a lot more nudity in this one. I kind of failed to point that out earlier. But then I suppose it's because it makes sense. If we're going back to Neanderthal, they wouldn't have had the tools around that we have now. Most of their life probably was spent semi-naked with, you know, furs and things. Um, skinned from animals, so skins to keep them covered when they had to for their modesty but I guess you can't walk around in furs and skins all day long because you're going to get warm aren't you my logical sense trying to kick in so what have we got here 
Aaron blood being swords fire swords Young person there for the page. Hmm. Well, definitely, feel, they probably will work very well together as decks because to me, I can see some similarities or a lot of similarities between them image wise. So here we go with the final cup, the water or soul. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to realign those decks. I think I'll keep them as I've done them here. Hopefully it's made sense to you all. For the sake of walk through, but I kind of get the feeling that because they run differently. Um, that's exactly how they are going to be read. You know, you're going to have to learn to read them. Probably have to create a, my own cheat sheet or something for this deck. Probably even this one as well, just with a few of the keywords. Um, to keep me, <laughs> keep me on track. Okay, so she's got her second face there. She's got one on her head. She looks fierce, doesn't she? Looks scary. Oh, he's not much less scarier, is he? Looks like something from The Walking Dead. So, there's the decks. So now let's just take a look at some oracles to pair with. Okay, so the first oracle I thought we'd just have a look and see how it works with these two is the Oracle of the Radiant Sun. Although since doing this side by side with you guys I'm thinking it's probably just these two decks working together but I can't really comment much on this now because we're sort of stuck so I have the um what do we call him the knight of wands <laughs> with the six of swords and we have escape for our keyword from the Oracle of the Radiant Sun, and that is um, Aries in Pisces, or Mars in Pisces. Okay, so we have Judgment with Rebellion, and uh, Twelve temperance. No, not temperance. Uh, suspension hand one. <laughs> having having problems right here, as you can tell. Looks like the ace of water with the Five of Pentacles and Discrimination. I mean, okay. I've got this one out because it's kind of esoteric-esque in its feeling. Um, it's a different system as opposed to pretty pictures and just words. Um, that's why I've put this one with these to see. But because these decks are so obscure in their namings and depictions, um, 
and I don't know them that well, uh, it's making it difficult for me. So we have our lovers with decisions and death. Well, I suppose maybe he's got a decision on how he's going to move forwards after he's lost his legs. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever it is, that's quite a mean card. Um, here we have four, seven, ten. Ten of pentacles. Oh, ten of pentacles and ten of swords with a fair. Interesting, I've got two tens. And then we have our page of wands with 13 queen of pentacles and optimism. So, okay. I think we'll leave that pairing with those ones there. Let's get another deck down. Of course, if we're going to go with primordial basic drawings, um, this is probably one of the only decks I have of basic oracle drawings. It's going to be the Pocket Oracle from Deviant Moon. So Mildred Payne's, Millie's Pocket Oracle. Um, I'm not going to try and keep reading out the cards because I'm probably going to get them wrong at some point, aren't I? Although I do know that's the four. I'm guessing four of Earth because it's brown borders with a cauldron. And our magician. Oh, that's quite interesting. Eight of Earth. Octopus. And two High Priestess. This one I do know. <laughs> the four with the orbiculum and the um, star. That's quite nice set either way um here we have our tower with the eye and the hierophant or hierophant and the eye because i don't know that i'll use all three together it would just be one on one mm -hmm. hierophant with the comet and our king okay Um, is that one still air at Earth? Or is that more blue for water? I'll take a peek. I think it might be water. Yeah, it is. So what I'm now discovering with this is I will put, um, although I have these, the colours aren't always completely obvious to me. So I will just put... Um, the sign of the suit in the bottom, uh, they're fire watered, so I know what they correspond to. I think that's just going to make it a lot easier. Um, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Although the bigger question is, will I do it according to this or will I do it according to this? Probably according to this. Okay. And I probably just did all that off screen. <laughs> did I just do all that off screen? I did, didn't I? Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm probably going to put the symbols onto this deck according to this side of the card as opposed to this side. So I understand what I'm looking at when I'm looking at these. Okay, that's Millie. So this one is the Wisdom of the Raven Oracle deck available on Etsy from the creators. Um, so this is shadowartfinds.com created by Jay Edward and Heather Neal. And um, they've got a bunch of decks. I've got five of them because, you know, I happen to like the artwork. So I just thought it's got this feel to it. So let's just have a quick peek at the, how the pictures kind of go together. So we've got balance here with a knight and a three. Two, chaos, temperance, creation with a queen and 
the Empress. Queen of Earth as well. I think they go well. We've got our three. Oh, another three. And disintegration. It's very interesting. Seven with duality and four. Queen with eccentric and we have, oh, another queen. Ooh. <laughs> so both my queens are eccentric. Ah, justice with guidance and the two of blood. No, number 11, not two of blood, page of blood. So, uh, yeah, actually, I think the Ravens, um, Wisdom for the Raven Oracle is pretty good. I like that one. Take that back in its box. Let's get the next one. Okay, so this Oracle, I have merged two Oracles together, taken out cards I don't want and kept the cards I do want to make a, a joint deck. And these are from the same creator as before. And it is the Spirits and Shadows merged with Dreams and Incarnations. Um, for this one so there's two different backs basically in here but uh i just thought you know the art is good so six with ascension and chariot direction okay so our suspend suspension suspended hanged one with our nine and protection We have five of Earth with death and one well, pretty scary looking <laughs> uh, entity above his head. Eight. Eight of souls. Ooh, he looks like a soul eater of some description. Death. OK, yeah, I'll go with that one. Um, here we have our father of Earth, king of Earth, grief and five of souls or water. He's got his kind of vessel there in his, um, near his mouth. It's less scary to the one that we just had, isn't it? This one, another five. Five of wands with flying and ten of air. That must be like a nature completion cycle for that person. And then temperance novice and six of souls or six of water um, interesting we have the moon here and the vessel and i have just now noticed and probably all of you noticed and been screaming so i've got bones Blades. That's me. It's suns or coins. And vessels in the corners. Jewels, wasn't it? We had jewels. Okay. And that might make it a little bit more obvious with what I'm looking at later down the line as I start to work with this deck. Anyway, there we go. So that's the, I think that's all I'm going to pair with this one. Um, I hope you enjoyed at least the comparison and the slight walkthrough of these. Um, sorry, I don't know the decks any better than that. I don't know how long it's going to be, as with many of the decks in my, and there's the two backs on these, in my collections. Um, it might be a while before I get to work with them, but the next time you see them will probably be through one of my journal videos. Um, and it's going to be a couple months down the line because I've got an abundance of decks that I want to work with before I probably come around to these ones. But we'll see, they might even turn up in um, some random uh, digital journals, perhaps, if I don't get to use them as a monthly turnaround deck. Right, until the next one.
Um, I thank you for your time and patience and I'll see you again. Take care. Bye-bye.